Good evening. For weeks, we've watched the politicians slugging it out together. Tonight, at last, we hear the voters' verdict as they tell us who's won. If the opinion polls through this campaign are borne out tonight, we're likely to see one of the biggest political upsets since the Tories were swept out of office in 1945. It is, at any rate, going to be a very, very exciting political night. We are already at all the places that matter. The Count at Sedgefield for Tony Blair, his Labour club, with the Tories in Huntingdon, with the Liberal Democrats in Yeovil, we'll be following the party leaders, we'll be at the party headquarters, we'll be at the key marginal seats where the battles are being fought and people are discovering whether they've lost or won. Uh, in a moment, when the polls close, I'll bring you what I really promise is the last poll of this election, our exit poll based on talking to people today as they came out of the voting booths and said how they'd cast their vote. The last poll, that is, before we add up the real votes. All through the night, Politicians will be coming here and be called to account by Jeremy Paxman. Yes, over the next 18 hours, we shall have a succession of victors vanquished and uh, walking wounded up here to explain what went right, what went wrong, and uh, what happens now in their respective parties. We'll be joined in a moment by Michael Portillo, with us already, Neil Kinnock and David Steele. And here, all the results are phoned into us from across the country. We don't jump the gun. We wait till the returning officer has announced them. We're not even going to guess the very safest seats. And when the facts are marshalled, they're given to Peter Snow, who will illustrate what's happened on the battlefield. Yes, David, and we'll be illustrating this battle for power in a more adventurous and inventive way than we've ever done before. Now, of course, the battle will be won or lost in these key battleground seats, all blue in the last parliament, Conservatives defending themselves against the Labour, the Liberal Democrats, the Scottish Nationalists, the Welsh Nationalists, and so on. And how many of these seats will Labour manage to turn red tonight, the Scottish National Party yellow, and the Liberal Democrats gold in their contest to cross Downing Street and open the door to number 10. As the results come in, we'll be looking at the hows and whys of this election and watching to see whose picture will be there on the stairs of number 10 above Margaret Thatcher's and John Major's. Will it be John Major again or will this space be occupied by Tony Blair? David. It's not just the way we vote that we'll be looking at, it's why we voted the way we did in different parts of the country. Our experts up there are looking at all of that and Peter Kellner will tell all. And over here at the round table with me, Robin Oakley, the BBC's political editor, will be looking at the battles that lie ahead. And Professor Anthony King of Essex University will place this, which could well be the last general election of this century, into context. And in addition to many correspondents, we have one special roving reporter tonight, Frank Skinner. Hello, David. We're in mid-air at the moment. Where are we, Alec? Right over Pontefract There you go. I might pop down for a cake. We're going to get to Leeds, Manchester, Birmingham. I'm going to get the word on the street. I'm going to supply a sort of a low-brow, down-at-heel counterpoint to your intellectual analysis in the studio. So I'm sort of BBC's bit of rough for the night. And it's still light in the north of England. Isn't that odd? We'll be back with him later on. And two battle-hardened correspondents back at the front line tonight. John Simpson at Sedgefield with Tony Blair and Kate Adie with John Major at Huntingdon. John. Well, this is Newton Acliffe Sports Centre, which is at the heart of Tony Blair's constituency. And uh, indeed, behind me, there is a definite air of excitement. People are expecting that the vote for possibly the next Prime Minister is about to be counted any moment, and there could be a turnout of 82%. And Kate Adie. Well, here in Huntingdonshire, the Conservatives are at least uh, happily confident of re-electing John Major. It is one of the safest seats in the country. But on the widest scene, we're going to have to wait about five hours until we hear from the Prime Minister himself. Thanks, Kate. And as Big Ben strikes 10, the polls close, we can give you the results of our exit poll. We've spoken to 14,000 people in 200 constituencies tonight, and uh, we hope they've been telling us the truth. There it is, 10 o'clock, and we say Tony Blair is to be Prime Minister and a landslide is likely. 
and reaction from Sedgefield already down there on the right in the Labour Club. All applauding there, Conservative Party headquarters, rather more sombre scenes. So here are the details. Tony Blair to be Prime Minister, and this is why. Labour, 47%. The Conservatives, 29%, according to our exit poll. That would be the worst result, not just this century, but if you care to go back that far to the Tory vote after the Great Reform Act in 1932, when they were led by the Duke of Wellington. The Liberal Democrats on 18%, pretty much what they did at the last election. Others on 6 We're joined by John Prescott. Well, Mr Prescott, it looks as though you've done it this time. Well, we'll have to wait and see. They look very wonderful results, but uh, that's just an exit poll. We set out to win in those 90 seats. That was our strategy era, and if we win there, we'll be very, very satisfied. You don't look like a man who's been having bad news all day, Mr Prescott. No, I mean, the polls have been remarkable. People have been queuing. We've heard these stories all around the country. Clearly, there's going to be a high turnout, but nevertheless, we have to wait and see what happens. If we can win those 90 seats that we set ourselves out, to do two years ago, we'd be more than happy with that. Okay, uh, Mr. Prescott, if you could stay with us a second, we're just going to hear the full details of our exit poll from Peter. Peter Snow. Well, I mean, David, John Prescott is, of course, absolutely right. This is just an exit poll, but my goodness, it has to be terribly wrong for the Tories to win this election. 47% the Labour share of the vote if our exit poll is anywhere near right, the best since 1966. 29% the Conservatives, as you said, We've never had anything like that since 1832, when the Duke of Wellington led his party to defeat them. In 18% for the Liberal Democrats and 6% for the others. Also, incidentally, that 18% lead by Labour over the Conservatives, bigger even than the record lead that Clement Attlee had over Winston Churchill in 1945. Now, the changes that would represent on the last general election, here they go. Labour up 12% on last time. The Tories down 14%. No change for the Liberal Democrats and 1% up the others. You'd expect that. Lots of other people contesting this time like a referendum party. Now, let's bring down our swingometer and see what all that means. Here it comes. Now, these are all the vulnerable red Labour MPs vulnerable to a Tory swing. Needn't worry about them, I don't think. These are the blue Conservative MPs vulnerable to each point of swing to Labour. What would happen if there were no swing at all? There'd be a Conservative majority, we estimate, on the new boundaries of something like 27. Now, these are the blue Conservative MPs who turn to red seats for Labour for a swing of 4.5%, something like 55 of them would go red, and that would be Mr Blair back with a bare majority. But the swing our exit poll is suggesting, just watch this. On it goes, look at those blue seats turning red, they go on and on and on, more than 100 of them, until you get to 13%. Now that swing, if it was precisely accurate, uniform all over the country, would see Labour in with a majority of very nearly 200. But just take the band of error. Don't forget, these exit polls can be 2% out in either direction. They can be even more than that if they're very wrong. But if they're 2% out of the margin of error, they're at the bottom end of our swing. It's 11% to Labour. But look, Labour with a majority of more than 100 with an 11% swing. If the swing was at the top end of our band of error, at 15%, then Labour would be in with a majority of over 200. It'd be something quite unique for the Labour Party and a record, certainly, since 1945. There we are then, a 13% swing, and it's even worse than that for the Tories if our exit poll is anywhere near right, because we're getting messages from the detail of the poll that there's a lot of tactical voting going on, that the Liberal Democrats may do better than the national swing of the seats they're chasing, and also the Tories are doing badly in their own seats, David. Thanks very much, Peter. Look, the ballot box is already arriving at Sunderland South being rushed in. Sunderland South making a point always of trying to be the first to declare, and actually a very useful seat because it'll give us the first indication of whether this landslide we're talking about is actually going to happen in reality. 57 minutes is the all-time record from the close of poll to getting a result in. That would mean three minutes before 11 o'clock. We'll see whether Sunderland beats that. But we're joined now by Dr. Brian McWinney, the chairman of the Conservative Party, the man who led this campaign. Dr. McWinney, uh, it's not a very good exit poll for you. It does look as though you've lost. Well, the country has made its decision, David. We have a new government. We simply have to wait to deter government, that is, which choice the British people have made. Uh, are you saying that you accept that Labour has won? No, I'm saying that uh, when the polls closed, all of those votes in ballot boxes up and down the country constitute a new parliament. They constitute a, a new government. That may be a government led by John Major or it may be a government led by Tony Blair. Uh, all the speculation, in a sense, is over. We will find the result uh, fairly soon. I'm a patient man. But uh, 